What does the Bible say about tattoos? This will shock you. Tattoos have been around for millennia. People have been tattooing for at least 5,000 years. Today, they are ubiquitous from the Maori communities in New Zealand to office parks in Ohio. However, in the ancient Middle East, the Hebrew Bible writers prohibited tattoos. According to Leviticus 19.28, do not cut your bodies for the dead or put tattoo marks on yourselves. Traditionally, scholars have understood this as a warning against the funeral practices of pagans. Some even believe that tattoos prevented the soul from leaving the body in the afterlife. However, there are some who suggest that tattoos have been understood differently in each era. Does God detest those who get tattoos, or does he not care and simply instruct us to do whatever we want? As time changes, how is the biblical prohibition on tattoos interpreted? If this is your first time watching our video, don't forget to like, subscribe, and hit the notification bell so you don't miss any of our Bible-related content. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, I pray that you receive many blessings from God. Amen. Let's begin. First, why do people say tattoos are a sin? A Christian should always live a life for God and keep his standards, but are tattoos really a part of those standards? What are the Bible views on tattoos or does the Bible speak against tattoos? Let's take a look at the verse that has started all of the controversy in the book of Leviticus. Most translations say something like this. Leviticus 19.28 says, Do not cut your bodies for the dead or put tattoo marks on yourselves. But, the word tattoo wasn't invented until the mid-1700s by the 18th century explorer, Captain James Cook. So let's look at the most literal and word-for-word -word translation out there. Leviticus 19.28 And a cutting for the soul ye do not put in your flesh in a writing, a cross mark, ye do not put on you, I am Jehovah. The original translation adds a bit more clarity to the conversation, but we really have to look at context when it comes to the Bible. Whether tattooing is a sin in Christianity remains an unclear and varied issue among different denominations and Christian leaders. The perspective on tattoos within the Christian community ranges from acceptance to strong opposition, reflecting broader theological interpretations and cultural contexts. For example, the late pastor Billy Graham, a renowned evangelical figure, suggested that although tattoos are not explicitly mentioned as sinful in the New Testament, Christians should consider how their actions, including getting tattoos, might be perceived by others and whether they might hinder their witness for Christ. He urged believers to deeply contemplate the why behind their decision to get a tattoo and whether it honors God. On the other hand, conservative individuals often refer to Leviticus 19.28, which instructs, do not cut your bodies for the dead or put tattoo marks on yourselves. I am the Lord. Although this is an Old Testament law that many believe was specifically directed at ancient Israelites, some Christians view it as a timeless guideline. Conversely, many modern Christian leaders and thinkers take a more liberal stance. They argue that tattoos themselves are not inherently sinful or morally wrong, as long as they do not convey messages that contradict Christian values. Pastor Mark Driscoll of Trinity Church in Scottsdale, Arizona, has mentioned that the cultural context and personal significance of tattoos can play a significant role in determining whether they align with Christianity, emphasizing the importance of the motive and message behind the tattoo. But the problem is, when you are reading the Bible, we can't just pick out scriptures and say, look, it says it right here in black and white, the reason is because you are taking one sentence, or a part of a sentence out of a dialogue, conversation, historical record. Let's look at a few Bible verses below to see the importance of context. Exodus 23, 19, bring the best of the first fruits of your soil to the house of the Lord your God. Do not cook a young goat in its mother's milk. Galatians 5, 12, as for those agitators, I wish they would go the whole way and emasculate themselves. Leviticus 26, 29, you will eat the flesh of your sons and the flesh of your daughters. Titus 3.13, do everything you can to help Zenas the lawyer and Apollos on their way and see that they have everything they need. You see, not a single one of those scriptures above have anything to do with you and the reason is simple. It isn't for you. It is either impossible or illegal to fulfill any of the above. It's being directed to a specific audience, which takes me to a very important fact of understanding the Bible. Just because the Bible records something doesn't mean God wants you to do it. The Bible is recording things that actually took place and is expressing things that people literally believed. 
Again, just because people believed it doesn't mean it is of God or God wants it that way. In fact, the entire Old Testament was never ever God's perfect plan, but it was a transition time of Adam to Jesus. God was restoring us back to perfection and he had a plan, Jesus Christ. So yes, it says it in black and white, but context gives the true meaning of these verses. So what is the context of tattoos being forbidden by God? If we recall the story of the Israelites when they were under the bondage of Egypt, I want to bring to mind an important fact that we need to consider. God used Moses to supernaturally help Israel escape from being slaves in Egypt, and once they crossed over the Red Sea and had gotten to Mount Sinai, God gives them rules to follow, ten of them to be exact. God gave Moses the Ten Commandments to help them operate fully in their freedom. If he didn't, the chance of the Israelites bringing over customs of bondage are very high. They needed a guide of what to do and not to do, which is why God gave them the commandments. For example, take the story of Otzi, Europe's oldest known natural human mummy, who lived between 3350 and 3105 BC, and had 61 tattoos. Sadly for Otzi, though, his tats were likely not for showing off at a coffee shop or the beach. Marks for crimes, prostitution, or pain relief were the most common reasons until the after Jesus time. Furthermore, many would cut their skin and make tattoos honoring false gods or other superstitions. The reference tattoos were likely ceremonial, expressing the false gods that the tattoo bearer was worshipping. So God had a specific reason not to be too keen on them. The same goes for this chapter in Leviticus where it mentions tattoos being sin. God is giving the children of God instructions, specifically the Sundarians, the sundry laws, on what to do and what not to do. God was teaching them how to operate in a new sense of freedom under him. It always interests me that the only law Christians pull out of this entire chapter is to rebuke tattoos and nothing else. And the question is, does verse 28 among them come out as anti-tattoo and make it a sin? Why does no one in force do not go over your vineyard a second time or pick up the grapes that have fallen? Leave them for the poor and the foreigner. Leviticus 19.10, or do not cut the hair at the sides of your head or clip off the edges of your beard. Leviticus 19.27, or keep my decrees. Do not mate different kinds of animals. Do not plant your field with two kinds of seed. Do not wear clothing woven of two kinds of material. Leviticus 19.19. The answer is because it doesn't make sense. It's silly and clearly not directed towards us today. Do you own a field? Do you make gods out of cast metals? Do you breed cattle? No. God was talking to the children of God back then, and they did all of these things. Now we may ask, why would God make some of these laws, and we can answer that in another blog. It really makes so much sense when understanding the audience that was hearing this. What the word tattoo in the Bible really means. Now that we attack this logically, let us tap into what is actually being expressed. The Bible does not make any mention to tattoos as know them today. The word that the Bible translates as tattoo in some English versions has a completely different meaning in the original Hebrew texts. The Hebrew word for tattoo is qaak, and it means to mark inscribed or engraved symbols. What is actually being expressed here relies on context. When Israel was first rescued from slavery, they were between Canaan and Egypt. Let's start with Egypt. Recent archaeological findings indicate that tattooing was very popular amongst the Egyptian women. Evidence has led us to believe that the Egyptians used to tattoo women on their breasts, bellies, thighs, etc. as a good luck charm for fertility. They believe that if you marked your body as worship to the dead, it would help with luck and protection during the birthing process. In Canaan, evidence indicates that more extreme measures were used. They were into branding, carving, and cutting the skin as an act of sacrificial worship archaeology and the Bible indicate that the Canaanites would customarily cut themselves and slash their body as an act of worship to false gods and deities. 1 Kings 18.28 says, So they shouted louder and slashed themselves with swords and spears, as was their custom, until their blood flowed. We also see a similar act during the famous battle between Elijah and the prophets of Baal, which were really backslidden Jews of the time. Elijah challenges them to a game of mortal combat. Well, not really, but he does challenge their gods to try and match the one true God. The prophets of Baal start going crazy, cutting themselves over their altar. They were out of control as they not only knocked over their altar, but Elijah's as well. 
heavy cutting, slashing, and marking in God's temple to honor pagan gods for worship purposes was exactly what God was forbidding in Leviticus 19. He did not want his children taking pagan religious rituals and practices into their newfound faith in Yahweh. Furthermore, tattoos and markings were not just a form of worship, but also a form of ownership. In ancient Mesopotamia, body markings, printing, engravings were also used to identify enslaved people. It was a sign of submission to an earthly master, but therein lies the issue with today. Most tattoos are not used for worship or slave ownership, and if it is, there is an issue, but rather love, honor, respect, and expression. This is not forbidden in any part of the scripture. In fact, the Bible says pretty clearly that if you are going to be marked, be marked for God. Isaiah 44, 5 says, Some will say, I belong to the Lord. Others will call themselves by the name of Jacob. Still others will write on their hand, the Lord's, and will take the name Israel. The word say in this verse is the Hebrew word kathab, which also means to write, engrave, inscribe, and mark. This verse almost seems to encourage it. If getting a tattoo is a sin, then why did Jesus have one? The infamous Jesus tattoo scripture in the book of Revelation. Let's take a look at the verse. Revelation 19.16 on his robe and on his thigh he has this name written King of Kings and Lord of Lords. When I think about this verse, I think of Jesus, dressed as the macho man Randy Savage, with the flowing sequin-filled robe walking out. King of Kings and Lord of Lords written on the back, a sweet thigh tattoo that echoes the same thing. It's pretty funny to watch all of the arguments against this verse, and most of them are set up by a straw man argument. According to Webster's Dictionary, a straw man argument is a weak or imaginary opposition, such as an argument or adversary, set up only to be easily confuted. So they start with something that is not true, then use that as the proof to make their point. So in this case, the argument is that Jesus couldn't have had a tattoo because tattoos are a sin. That is a good argument, if tattoos are a sin, but if they are not which they aren't, the argument falls to pieces. The verse clearly states that on his robe, his thigh, he was marked with the words King of Kings and Lord of Lords. So should we get tattoos and not worry anymore? Not so fast. The following Bible verses might help you reflect on this issue. I also want the women to dress modestly, with decency and propriety, adorning themselves, not with elaborate hairstyles or gold or pearls or expensive clothes, 1 Timothy 2.9. New American Bible, this principle applies to both women and men. We should respect the feelings of others and not draw excessive attention to ourselves. Some want to establish their identity or independence, while others get a tattoo to assert ownership of their body. However, the Bible encourages Christians, therefore, I urge you, brothers and sisters, in view of God's mercy, to offer your bodies as a living sacrifice, holy and pleasing to God, this is your true and proper worship, Romans 12.1. Use your power of reason to analyze why you want a tattoo. If it's because you want to follow a trend or signify membership in a certain group, remember that your feelings may prove less permanent than the tattoo. The beginning of wisdom is this get wisdom. Though it cost all you have, get understanding Proverbs 4.7. The plans of the diligent lead to profit, as surely as haste leads to poverty, Proverbs 21.5. The decision to get a tattoo is often made hastily, but it can have lasting impacts on relationships and employment. Tattoos can be expensive and painful to remove. Research, as well as the booming tattoo removal business, shows that a large number of people with tattoos eventually wish they hadn't gotten them. And above all, before deciding to get a tattoo, you might consider the following issues. Modification, since the Bible does not explicitly forbid tattoos, are there any limits? Do you not know that your bodies are temples of the Holy Spirit, who is in you, whom you have received from God? You are not your own, you were bought at a price. Therefore honor God with your bodies. 1 Corinthians 6, 19, 20. The Bible values the body as God's handiwork, not to be disfigured. Non-Israelites did not hold this view. Today, some people have permanently modified their bodies to look more like animals or aliens than humans, who alone are created in His image. We must ask ourselves how much we can modify our bodies according to our desires without distorting the beauty of the human form as created by God. Motivation for a tattoo, why get a tattoo? Children, obey your parents and the Lord, for this is right. 
Honor your father and mother, which is the first commandment with a promise, so that it may go well with you, and that you may enjoy long life on the earth, Ephesians 6, 1, 3. So whether you eat or drink or whatever you do, do it all for the glory of God, 1 Corinthians 10, 31. This means seeking to honor and draw attention to him, not ourselves. Getting a tattoo for the purpose of witnessing may be acceptable, but remember, this is not the primary or most effective way to evangelize. It in no way replaces communicating the gospel verbally. You do not fulfill the Great Commission just because you have a Bible verse tattoo. Humility, humility means not self-promoting. Are you seeking to direct people's thoughts towards God or yourself? Tattoos often highlight certain body parts and cause us to think about that body part. It's hard to believe anyone with a tramp stamp a tattoo on the lower back is trying to direct thoughts towards God. Humble thinking will make you consider, and even limit, the size, number, and placement of tattoos. Marketability will employers want to hire you. Many companies do not want your tattoos to be visible, and it may prevent you from being hired. Many employers will restrict your tattoos, requiring you to cover them up, as they are not socially acceptable from a business standpoint. Message of the tattoo, what about yourself do you want to convey to the world? Tattoos are powerful messages, automatically conveying what you value. They are almost permanent and will likely stay with you for life. An increasing experience with tattoos is formally known as tattoo regret as you mature. You may, like many others, regret your tattoos because you have outgrown their message and changed your values. Money, is this the wisest use of money? According to the website Tattoo Info, in the US, you can expect to charge $50 to $100 for a small tattoo, up to $200 for a medium tattoo and over $250 for a large tattoo. The sky is the limit though when it comes to very large pieces. It can be very expensive to get elaborate in large tattoos. We are accountable to God for how we use our money. It is important to remember that removal technologies being developed are even more expensive than the cost of the initial tattoo. Health concerns, there are real health risks with tattoos. Mayo Clinic warns, don't take the decision to get a tattoo lightly. They have led to severe allergic reactions, infections, unsightly scars, and blood-borne diseases like hepatitis B and C. Getting a tattoo deliberately opens the skin and exposes your blood to unknown bacteria. Tattoo parlors are not medical clinics, although they puncture skin and expose blood. From the smallest word on an ankle to a full color body display, tattoos are becoming increasingly popular, even among Christians. Please think before you ink. Do not make this decision hastily or impulsively. Use these guiding questions to think through your decision. 1 Samuel 16.7 says, But the Lord said to Samuel, Do not consider his appearance or his height, for I have rejected him. The Lord does not look at the things people look at. People look at the outward appearance, but the Lord looks at the heart. We need to stop looking at how people look on the outside and start looking at what they look like on the inside. We need to stop being so concerned with outward appearance and start being more focused on the condition of the heart. Christianity doesn't have a look it has love. Thank you for watching our video to the end. Please share this video with your loved ones so they can also learn about this. Don't forget to like, subscribe and hit the notification bell so we can be motivated to create more videos about the Bible. We hope to see you in the next video. May God bless and protect you always. Amen.